اوكي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا uh, Brothers, sisters, I'm really very delighted to be with you although it is very unfortunate that I'm not uh, with you physically uh, because of this coronavirus but alhamdulillah the brothers, mashallah, who are running forces, they managed to uh, put this program together, uh, the brothers and sisters. So may Allah Jalla wa ala reward you. We are trying to do our best. They are trying to do uh, their best. Uh, yes, obviously, if we are uh, doing the program face to face and uh, mixing together, chatting together, that will be more effective. But Alhamdulillah, we, uh, they are, the brothers are trying uh, to do as much as they can. Okay, brothers, sisters, the topic of this uh, lecture or this discussion, and I prefer that we have it uh, in a very uh, interactive way. Uh, as I have said about Sabir programs, we do them in a very unique way in order to build uh, brothers, sisters from all aspects, uh, to build them intellectually, spiritually, socially, and so on. And in order to do that, we have to have interactive uh, programs uh, and we have to have deep intellectual discussions. This is what we do in Sabil, and I found this as the most effective way of learning. Even you, brothers and sisters, I advise you to go and Google something called the pyramid of learning and you will see that the most effect effective learning is the interactive one and what is even more interactive, more, more, more effective than that is when you start giving the lectures, which again, we do in Sabil. So that's why brothers, sisters, I would like to receive comments from you, questions. Yeah, feel free to raise your hand and the brothers, uh, we have a brother uh, Rawaha and we have brother Shihab and the, 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 we have the sisters as well. They will manage it in a way uh, to allow you to, to ask questions. You can also feel free to ask questions directly through the chat uh, box. Okay. Now, if we uh, just to start in a very academic way, when we talk about trials, uh, when we talk about temptations, uh, I don't want to go into the definition of temptations just because of time. Uh, but all of us, we know uh, what does temptations mean? What does uh, desires, generally speaking, mean? Now, uh, why those temptations and desires were created in us? Allah Jalla wa Ala, Allah Jalla wa Ala created this life as a test. Please, please, young brothers and sisters, I meet young brothers and sisters very frequently and they ask many of them are confused about the reality of this life the purpose of this life uh, many of them are confused why do we have these desires and temptations to the point that i'm writing an article now even it will be inshallah published on islam 22 see about the blessings of the blessings of temptations yeah this life is a test and if there are no temptations and desires then this life will be will not be a test and Allah Jalla wa ala confirmed this reality in so many places in the Quran we created death and life in order to test you we created you, O oh mankind, from a sperm, and then we made you into tissues in order to test you. This is Friday. Today is Friday. And on Friday, it is highly recommended to read uh, Surah Al-Kahf. In the beginning of Surah Al-Kahf, we read that Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Inna ja'alna ma ala al laha ayyuhum ayyuhum ahsanu amala. We have created this earth. We decorated this earth in order for us to test them, human beings, to test the human beings who are the best in their deeds. Okay, the second point, 
as I said, desires and temptations, they, uh, in this life, brothers and sisters, there is nothing that is completely evil. And this is a very philosophical, yet very powerful concept. There is nothing that is completely evil. Everything has evil sides and positive sides. Everything has negative sides and uh, positive sides. Even the shaitan, brothers and sisters. Even the sexual desire, which, is, uh, which might lead many people off. Those temptations, even the shaitan, it has so many blessings. The shaitan is making you on, as they say, on your toes all of the time. You are fighting the shaitan all of the time and then you are earning more hasanat. You become better person when you fight an enemy of you. If you don't have temptations, desires, you will feel bored of this life. Brothers, sisters, I have experience, uh, uh, you know, when I went through this cancer and during the chemotherapy I was uh, having, at one point, you hate food. You hate food. Not just you don't, uh, you don't have uh, the, the, the appetite. No, you lose it, but also you hate food. Wallahi, brothers, sisters, I realized the big ni'mah of just craving for food, not just wanting to eat, craving for food. And the brother told me, okay, and uh, the, 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 he lived, long time, long life with no children. And he got married and then he was divorced. And he said that he doesn't have any kind of urge for the opposite gender. And you can feel that this person doesn't want to become a different person. He doesn't have a challenges in his life. He doesn't want to become a different person. And he says that, why do I need to work hard? Children, I don't have a children. Wife, I don't have a wife. I am living by myself. Even you can see on himself, he doesn't look after himself and so on. So the desires actually, one of the blessings of desires and temptations, they create the balance in this life, which is a test. So don't look at desires and temptations always in a negative way. As we said, Allah Jalla Ala, as Ibn al Qayyim Rahimahullah Ta'ala says, did not create shar mahab, did not create pure evil. And that's why in the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, was sharru laysa ilayk. Evil is not attributed to you. Yes, because Allah Jalla Ala confirmed that he is the most merciful and we know that. Yes. For all human beings, he is what? Ra'uf. He is the most gentle, the most kind. Let alone that, in particular, regarding the believers, he is more kind towards those who submit to him and those who ask him for help, and he is helping them more. Okay, this is an introduction about temptations and desires in general. Okay, now the key question that many of you will be asking is how to resist, yes, the desires and temptations or let us put, the, put it in the other way, how to control our desires and temptations and make them, uh, make, them uh, make them as a positive aspect of our life rather than a negative aspect. Okay, I will answer your questions now, but let me mention a few things and then I can take uh, your questions. Brothers, sisters, read Surah Yusuf. And Surah Yusuf really is an amazing uh, surah. Every chapter of the Quran is really amazing. It has its own persona, its own personality, each uh, chapter. But in Surah Yusuf, and this is the theme of this uh, conference, uh, the 57th uh, annual conference of uh, forces. May Allah Jalla wa Ala reward all the brothers and sisters behind it. Uh, the theme is what? The theme is patience, yes, 
uh, how to uh, how to how to counteract those uh, desires through the stories of the prophets and through the story of uh, Yusuf alayhi salam in particular. Yusuf alayhi salam, when he faced this great test, yeah, he was a young person, not married, by himself, uh, alone, and he was serving in this palace. And then Imra'atul Aziz, she is like the queen, one of the dignitarians. She is, uh, they, as they described, that she was uh, a very pretty, uh, attractive lady, and there was no one around them. And she, what? She herself approached him and tried even to touch him. What Allah Jalla wa'ala says about that? How Allah Jalla wa'ala describes that? Yeah? بِهِ بِهِ he was stopped by Allah Jalla wa'ala. We don't want to get into the uh, interpretation of, of that. But look at what Allah Jalla wa'ala said after that. كَذَلِكَ لِنَصْرِفَ عَنْهُ السُّوءَ وَالْفَحْشَاءَ إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُخْلَصِينَ We want to protect him from those desires that will lead to what? سوء وفحشاء lead to bad and evil practices or things. Why? Because he was among our ibad, المخلصين. المخلصين means the sincere servants of us, the close people to us. Which means from this, we take number one, we take uh, method number one to protect ourselves from desires and temptations. Brothers, sisters, build up yourself. Many of you, many young people, they lose their time. They don't build up their self. And wallahi, I swear by Allah Jalla Ala, and today is Juma, and it is not good to swear all the time. All of us at one point will regret that we didn't do more, especially those who neglected their younghood and they did not build up, they did not build up themselves in all angles, once they will regret it. Not in the Akhirah, we definitely we will regret as the Prophet وسلم, says, but in the dunya. Because later on, when time goes and we become older, yeah, we become also more mature, we will look at what we used to do when we are young, and then we will say, oh no, we lost our time. Yeah? Let alone, as the Prophet وسلم, says, that every single person on the, will be questioned on the day of resurrection about four things, and one of them is what? An umurihi, about his life. What did he or what did she do with their life? So brothers, sisters, before you regret, build up yourself. What do I mean by build up yourself? Okay, number of things, very quickly. Okay, every single one of you should think of a vision. What do I want to be? What do I want to see? What kind of projects I want to be involved in? And why? Why do I want to uh, be like that? And the worst thing for people in general, as Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, and for young people is to live with no high ambition. And Umar ibn al-Khattab, he says, I hate to see a person who is useless, not doing something for his dunya, not doing something for his akhirah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah jalla wa ala likes noble matters. So this is number one. Think, what do you want to do? What do you want to see? What do you want to achieve? Think of big projects to be involved in. Yes, this is one thing. The other thing is learn, learn, learn. Learn everything that is useful for you. Learn, brothers, sisters, learn everything that is useful for you. The key question, the key point is, when you want to learn something, ask yourself, is this useful for me or not? I'm just going through these points very quickly. And another point, which is build up your Iman, your relationship with Allah Jalla 
Yusuf alayhi salam, as Allah Jalla wa ala says, was protected because of his relationship with Allah Jalla wa ala, because of his Iman. B, try to be one of the awliya of Allah Jalla wa ala. Allah Jalla wa ala says in the Quran, Ala inna awliya Allahi la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. The awliya of Allah Jalla wa ala, those close companions of Allah Jalla wa ala, there will be no fear for them. No fear in the dunya, no fear even in the akhirah, because in the akhirah they will not have huzun, they will not have, uh, they, they, they will not be sad because Allah Jalla wa ala will honor them. Yeah, so try to be that. Many young brothers and sisters are not taking this matter easily, uh, or they are not taking this matter seriously. They are taking it very easily. And that's why they fall with the first, maybe, uh, test. And I have seen so many examples like this. Brothers, sisters, young brothers and sisters who come and they say, oh, Sheikh, I could not control myself. And I did, I made, I, 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 I fell into this haram. And see, listen, young people, there are so many mistakes. If you do them, those mistakes will destroy you completely. Yeah? So it is not a, it is not a joke. It is not a joke. How many young uh, brothers, we had cases of young brothers who were, uh, involved in a zina relationship, okay, with some, with some young sisters as well, in colleges, in universities, they were involved in a haram relationship. And then the sister became pregnant. And then he realized that, oh, this, this, this child is mine. And then he went to crazy. She went to crazy as well. And we had some stories uh, in, in, in European countries, in different European countries, where the, those brothers and sisters who were involved in such a relationship became suicidal. Yeah? And some of them, they, 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 they became uh, mental. And uh, we know of one case recently, we dealt with, with, with uh, the, the case of that sister. She uh, was uh, pregnant, a young age, she hid that from her parents and then her parents found out she ran away and then uh, after that uh, she tried to commit suicide and then the it was not in, in here and anyway in another country the social services there they knew about this they took that child she became even more okay uh, uh, more mental after that all of this is because of what because the person uh, could not control himself or herself and they fell into this haram relationship. So you need to build up yourself in order to be able to face those desires and, and temptations. Build up your iman. Allah will help you when you build up your iman and he sees that you are trying to protect yourself from the haram uh, relationship or the, the, the following your desires wrongly or for your, the, those temptations wrongly, Allah will help you. Allah will not let you down or Allah will not let you alone. Yeah? Uh, those who rely on Allah Jalla Ala, Allah Jalla Ala will suffice them and the story of uh, Yusuf alayhi salam is, is uh, an evident for that. Okay, another way to protect yourself from, uh, uh, from following your desires in a very evil way or in a wrong way or following those uh, temptations is to keep away, keep away. What do I mean by that? Okay, brothers, sisters, let us talk um, openly and clearly. The biggest worry of most of the young people, yeah? Um, you know, I give lectures in universities. Uh, I have the fatwa line. The, even this Sabir program is mainly for young people like yourselves. Uh, wherever I go, I like to mix with young people like yourselves. 
the biggest worry for them and the biggest desire, the biggest temptation is the sexual one, yeah? And sometimes the sexual one is not purely sexual, but it is mixed with the emotional. But which one? The, 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 the emotional sexual relationship between opposite genders, yeah? This is the strongest, you can say, urge, and it is the strongest challenge facing young people uh, like yourselves. Beside building up yourself, which is the first point that I mentioned, the second point is keep away. Okay, now, many brothers, sisters, keep close relationship with each other, yeah? And uh, they, this, the shaitan, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, yeah, says that, uh, I haven't left a bigger fitna for men than the fitna of women. So we know that this kind of attraction between opposite gender is so strong, yeah? And, uh, and it, is, uh, uh, it is so strong. And we have seen the story of uh, Yusuf alayhi salam, yeah? And what happened to him. So now, uh, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam told us, yeah, that uh, this kind of relationship, if it is not controlled, then it will lead to bigger haram. That's why uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that when uh, a male and a female are uh, alone together in one place, then they will the shaitan will be the third of them. And the Prophet ﷺ told us that the first glance is overlooked, but if you continue doing that, then this will, uh, uh, the, the, this will increase the attraction and then you will fall into the haram relationship. So, brothers, sisters, now what I said, uh, keep away, just a minute, sorry. When I said keep away, I said, what do I mean by that? Many brothers and sisters take this relationship between themselves in a very easy way, casual way. And do you think that, uh, uh, that the shaitan will leave them alone? No, will not leave them alone. So that relationship will develop slowly, slowly, slowly. And they become more attached to each other until they cannot leave each other. We came across stories where they were chatting every day for hours and hours. Young people, I have so many stories of that. I had a story, one of the very recent one, the young boy, he was 14 plus, yeah? He was going with his uh, colleague, she was 14 plus, as well after the, the, the school and the spending time in the park yeah, for hours and hours. And then when he left her, he was about to become mental because she went to a different college. So we need to follow the guidelines of Sharia ah, yeah? by just try to control that relationship and not to uh, be uh, okay together as much as we can. Even when you have to be with the opposite gender, you have to observe certain Islamic guidelines. And I strongly advise you not to communicate with a particular person from the opposite gender for a long time. Brothers, sisters, I have stories of married people, yeah? And we can see those stories uh, everywhere uh, in media, yeah? Married people, married couples, and each one of them was communicating with a married person, okay? Uh, because of work, because sometimes of da'wah, and after some time, the shaitan put attraction between them, and then they ended up in haram, okay? And the, uh, so this is the second method that will help you to resist those temptations and desires. The, the third one is, I said from one side, keep away, 
yeah, from the temptations and desires as much as we can. And if, if this proximity between both genders will lead to this, and it is very likely to lead to this, then you have to control it. In the other side, on the other side, brothers, sisters, each one of you should keep close to a group of people from the same gender, from, from the same gender, and they should encourage each other to build up their iman, to protect themselves. The Prophet Sallallahu told us that the wolf eats the lonely sheep. Don't be by themselves, by yourself. Many brothers, especially brothers, who become addicted to pornography. How did they start this? By using laptops or their mobile phones, and they keep themselves by themselves, and they start watching, yeah? And slowly, slowly, they become addicted. I came across a person, yeah, who prays, yeah? I saw him, wallahi, this is what he told me, in the masjid, in the masjid. And he approached me, and he told me, Sheikh, I am addicted to pornography. I spend six to seven hours almost every day watching this pornography. I became mad. I believe that I am an evil person. I believe that I am mental. Yes? And how did this start? Started slowly, slowly. So when I said in the first point or in the second point, keep away, yeah? Uh, uh, because he did not keep away, he started to do that. And it is like slipping his slope. And then he continued, continued and until he became addicted. He is isolating himself from the good brothers who can help him to protect his iman. And that's why I urge every single person, a brother or a sister, to have some terbiya programs. Yeah, terbiya programs. Uh, they attend regularly in order to keep with some good brothers, uh, sisters to keep with some good sisters, and those people very likely to help this person against the shaitan, uh, against even uh, his desires and, and uh, temptations. Okay, uh, the fourth point. The fourth point. See, brothers and sisters, don't try the haram. Yeah? Don't try the haram. And listen to this philosophy. The human being is either progressing or regressing. Yeah? Now, progressing, if you... If you move up, yeah, then you are away from zero, away from the haram. But, and if you, if you move up, it will be even easier for you to keep moving up and up and up, yeah? But if you don't do that, human beings will never stay stagnant. There is no stagnancy in this life. But if you try the haram, yeah, so you are going down. Now it is even more difficult for you to go up, yeah? Or to, because you need to go to level zero first, and then you need to move up by this haram. Not only that, now the shaitan has more control over you, so it will be easier for you to go down this slipping uh, road, yeah? Uh, so it is very slippery, and it will you will continue going down. Once you go down that much, you need a strong will and power to what? To start going up, 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 little by little. Yes? Uh, so, my advice to you, brothers and sisters, don't try it in the first place. The last thing I would like to do, if you make a mistake, yeah, whatever kind of mistake, strongly, brothers and sisters, first of all, make a lot of istighfar, ask Allah Jalla Ala for forgiveness and the other thing is uh, ask some people for help yeah knowledgeable people for help as we said don't be by yourself and i will conclude by this young brothers sisters don't lose hope please all of you maybe are like my children yeah i meet young people like yourselves i beg you don't lose hope. The shaitan wants you to lose hope because the, the shaitan, as uh, Al-Hasan al-Basri said to a person, uh, who, he's, 
Uh, th that person asked him, you know, I uh, make, I commit sins, and then I ask Allah for forgiveness. But I continue to make the sin again. Yeah, I fall into this sin again. So uh, shall I continue making istighfar? And I know that I will keep doing that. Hassan al-Basri told him, you need to continue to do istighfar. Why? Because your istighfar will help you against the shaitan, against this sin. And maybe you will die. Die with some istighfar and repentance. Yeah, better than you die without istighfar. And Allah Jalla wa Ala says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah Jalla wa Ala wouldn't uh, punish you while you are making istighfar and Allah Jalla wa Ala wouldn't punish you. Uh, uh, yeah, Allah Jalla wa Ala wouldn't punish you, punish, punish them as far as you, O Muhammad, are in between them. And Allah Jalla wa Ala wouldn't punish them as they are making istighfar to Allah Jalla wa Ala. Uh, the last thing, uh, brothers, sisters, uh, I want to say that uh, we need to make a lot of dua to Allah Jalla wa Ala so he help us and protect us against the evil of ourselves. Don't, today is Jumu'ah, before the Maghrib of Jumu'ah, Make dua to Allah Jalla Ala. Yeah? Make dua to Allah Jalla Ala. The dua on Yawm al Jum'ah, especially before Maghrib, is answered. Very likely to be answered. Wake up in the middle of the night and make dua to Allah Jalla Ala. By the end of your Fard Salah, make dua to Allah Jalla Ala. Choose those times between Adhan and Iqama. Make dua to Allah Jalla Ala sincerely. And once Allah Jalla Ala sees that you are begging Him to help, for help, Allah Jalla wa'ala will not let you down. أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُطَّرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ Allah says, ask me and I will answer you immediately. Many people, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that the loser, the real loser is the person who is, doesn't, do dua who lose the the benefit of dua so don't do that my dear respected brothers and sisters may allah jalla wa ala help us and may allah jalla wa ala protect us from the evil of my uh, ourselves part of the dua that you need to do brothers and sisters is your morning and day adhkar yeah morning and day adhkar and those brothers in particular brothers who you know, are you know, falling into the, the haram, you know, uh, looking at haram things and, and pornography or something, I strongly advise you early in the morning, say, and sisters as well, yeah, but because brothers fall in this more, yeah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, whoever says in the morning, yeah, uh, whoever says, uh, لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. Hundred times Allah جل وعلا will give him five things. Allah جل وعلا will give him one hundred حسنة. Allah جل وعلا will remove one hundred سيئة. And it seems that those are major حسنات, major سيئة. And Allah جل وعلا will give him the reward as if he freed ten of the slaves of Bani Israel. And Allah Jalla wa Ala, uh, sorry, slaves of, of uh, slaves of, of uh, son of uh, Ismail, yani among the, yani this is a very, um, very great reward, yeah, to free a slave person. And you will be rewarded as if you have freed 10 slaves. And Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah Jalla wa Ala will give you protection from the shaitan for the rest of your day. That's why Meneskala said, do this dhikr early in the morning. And no one will come on the day of resurrection with a better deed yeah, than yours, except a person who did that and more. May Allah Jalla wa'ala protect all of you, brothers and sisters. May Allah Jalla wa'ala help all of us to go against those desires. And uh, let me 
answer some of your questions here quickly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 okay. So here, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Salam alaikum. What tips would you suggest for brothers and sisters who are in ISUC committee with regards to interaction and engagement with, with each other and discussing ISO plans and ideas? I will answer this for the brothers and sisters from, okay, number of things beside what I have said. Control that relationship. Allah Jalla wa ala is watching you. Yeah? So control that relationship. Make it to the minimum. Also, try to have a third person with you in that communication. Yes? Please, please, brothers. Yeah? Don't communicate individually. Yeah? You are young. You will become attracted to each other even sometimes not visual attraction through the way you communicate with each other. And the shaitan will lead you to something bigger than that. And moreover, when you have a third person, then this third person will be a witness. Because if you were accused by the other side that you have uh, maybe said something inappropriate or you have maybe harassed her or him, then the third person will be what? will be a witness. Okay, uh, these are uh, quick tips. Uh, there is another question. Uh, uh, okay, Sheikh. Uh, uh, question. Yeah. Sorry, Sheikh. Shall I go through the questions, inshallah? Yeah, if you have. Okay. Uh, and yeah. let the brothers and sisters, let them be free to ask any question they want. Yeah. Okay, inshallah. Uh, the next uh, most liked question is, if someone asked, if I was looking to get married to a particular person, but was unable to due to external factors, how can I differentiate between it being a sign from Allah to let go of this person and to move on, or it being a sign that you should wait and persevere until Allah unites you both together? Yeah, okay. This is, this is a good question. Uh, see, you need maybe to evaluate the situation. Yes? Now, I'm not able to get married to this person due to what? Yeah? For example, brother is unable to get married to the sister. Her parents refused. Are they refusing for a wrong reason? Or maybe they said, wait until you, uh, uh, you, you, you graduate and you have a degree and you have a good job. Yeah? If those reasons confirm that, well, it is very hard to get married to this person, listen, young brothers and sisters, I advise you to move on with your life. Yeah? Don't wait. Because if you wait, the shaitan will not let you wait just negatively or, pa sorry, passively. The shaitan will try, okay, to... Uh, approach you slowly, slowly in order for you to fall into the haram relationship. You will become even more attracted to the other person. Yeah. And don't tell me, brothers and sisters, I know, you know. Yeah. Don't tell me that if a brother wants to get married to a sister and he will not, you know, go and check her Facebook. Don't tell me that he will not, you know, go to her uh, any other social network in order maybe to see what she is about, what she says, etc., etc. I know how young people, I mix with young people. Yeah, Don't tell me that you won't be able to do, you, you won't uh, be doing that. You will just wait uh, passively. So I strongly, or even with the sister doing that, okay, with, with the brother whom she is interested to marry. I advise you, that if you find that, well, it is not working now, just forget it and move on with your life. Yeah. Jazakallah khair for the answer, Sheikh. Alhamdulillah. Someone's asked, uh, it's a question that a lot of people ha um, have uh, agreed with. Uh, how do you discover your purpose or goal in life? Okay, excellent question. Excellent question. Okay, yes. We need really, 
of course, and we do this in uh, Sabil, yeah? First of all, all of us should have, yeah, the Akhira, the Jannah, the highest place in Jannah as our ultimate goal. Then, okay, this is step number one. Step number two, ask yourself, how do I go there? Yeah? Now, when you, in order to answer this question, ask yourselves, what are your skills that you have? And what is the need? These are two key questions. What are the skills that you have? Yeah? And what is the need in the society? And try to have a balance between your skills and your, those needs in the society. Once you discuss or evaluate your skills, you need to evaluate or check one important thing, which is how, how you are going to survive in terms of life. So how, to, how are you going to have income? Where are you going to live? Uh, how uh, your spouse? So those key questions part of the discussion that you should have among yourselves regarding your skills, yes? In order to evaluate all of this opposite to the, uh, the needs. I'll give you an example, yeah? I'll give you an example. I remember a case of a sister, she wants to study uh, Alfiya to be Malik. This is 1,000 line of poetry. Uh, uh, and I asked her, sister, why do you want to do this? She said, well, you know, I, Alhamdulillah, I am a mother, successful mother, I have my children, etc., etc." I said, yes, I, I have no problem with that. But why do you want to do this? She said, yeah, because I want to understand Arabic more, etc., etc." I said, sister, how long are you going to spend in doing this? She said, I, I am asking you, you are the teacher. I said, you will spend at least four or five years. She said, is it? I said, yeah. I said, sister, how many sisters around you, they don't know how to read Fatiha? She said, oh, many. I said, on the day of resurrection, what do you prefer to come to Allah with so many sisters that you taught Surah Fatiha or you spend this time in learning, uh, in learning this Al-Fiyat ibn Malik, uh, Arabic grammar? She said, no, I think to come to Allah Jalla with so many uh, sisters that I taught Surah Fatiha, which they are going to read 17 times a day, yeah, that is better. I said, that is the answer, yeah? So check your skills again, and check the needs. Mm. And I advise you that sometimes you might not be able to figure out the answer. Ask a person who has some managerial skills, one key shortcoming we as Muslims are suffering from is managerial skills. Yeah. And I advise you, brothers and sisters, take courses in management. Yeah. Take courses in management. They will help you in this life. They will develop you. Okay. We only have a few minutes left, so go to the next one. Someone asked, um, should one make an oath to Allah to not commit a sin again when repenting? As one of the conditions of repentance is to decide to not to commit to commit the sin again. However, okay. breaking an oath is also a major sin. So, how should one repent? Yeah, very good question. Very good question. Subhanallah. Two days ago in the council, we have one of the uh, organizations that we initiated is the Islamic Council of Europe, and we receive uh, cases of uh, mainly marriage cases, but. Many young brothers and sisters, they come for counseling just about their life. And two days ago, we had a case of a brother. He developed any yani, kind of uh, OCD because he took an oath upon himself not to commit that sin. Yeah. And then he said that I broke that promise number of times. So now I am confused. Uh, and I read in the Quran that Allah Jalla will punish those who do not fulfill their promises with Allah Jalla Okay, see, you might do this if you are not that person who will develop this kind of wiswas. 
But what is better than that, yeah, is every time you make a sin, don't make it an oath with Allah Jalala. Take it يعني, like a commitment among yourself uh, or, or with yourself. Whenever you commit that sin, yeah, first of all, you immediately pray to Raka for forgiveness. Okay? And immediately say Subhanallah wa bihamdihi 100 times so Allah Jalla wa Ala will for, uh, forgive the sin and make istighfar. So these are three things. Pray to Raka for istighfar, say Subhanallah wa bihamdihi 100 times, make istighfar and do something that is really big. What do I mean by that? If you don't have money, take upon yourself that if I commit this sin, I will yeah, give 100 pounds sadaqa. Wow, but I don't have money. Yes, this will help you to stop it. Or I find it so difficult to fast, especially in summer. Wow, if I commit this sin, then I have to, okay, to, you know, fast this day. So that, inshallah, will help you slowly, slowly to get rid of the sin. However, be careful of the shaitan. Yeah, the shaitan will not leave us alone. He will say to you, listen, do this haram, you know, have this chat with, with the opposite gender or look at this haram. And, you know, just once you finish it, you will say, astaghfirullah, or you will pray to raka'ah, as the sheikh said, and that will be forgiven. Brothers, sisters, the sin leads to another sin. Yeah, that's why Allah Jalla Ala says, لا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان, the steps of the shaytan, which is not one step. So the sin will lead to another sin. And the second sin is, a big, is bigger than the first sin. Yeah? So you have to be careful because it is, as I said, please do remember this. Uh, you are either progressing or regressing. Yeah. No. Well, inshallah, we'll take one last question. Um, cool. Quite a few. Last one. Someone has said, okay, uh, how do you, how would you comfort those who have been trying to get married uh, post university? Someone who has refrained from haram relationships and yet still cannot seem to find someone with a mutual compatibility or likeness. It becomes tough when you have refrained from all of these things and yet still are struggling. However, those who mixed at uni, yeah, those who mixed at university are now married. Although I do appreciate, I understand it is a test from Allah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all. Well, to be honest with you, I doubt that this is happening. Yeah. Okay. The second thing, uh, see, many people, yeah, even they, 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 they say this in psychology and psychiatry. Yeah. Many people who have, who started their, their relationship between marriage, their marriages, they don't last that long because before marriage, the relationship is artificial and after marriage they see the reality of each other and they do not continue yeah okay so as you said it is a test from allah however we do not say that don't go and you know look ask the social network uh, your social network by that i mean your parents your siblings even friends extended family Okay, and even if you come to know, uh, let us be realistic, brothers and sisters, you, each, you see each other in, in, in the university, in the college, uh, you see. So you know about this sister or you know about this brother and maybe try to find the right way to approach them, yeah? Uh, um, either through the ISOC, through a senior person, ask about their family, and there is a way. It doesn't mean that once we say, just keep away from each other, it, do it doesn't mean that you will, okay, you will be fully isolated and you don't know what is happening around you. Yeah. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Alhamdulillah. Uh, it was a very, very beneficial talk of which you no, covered no. so many amazing things like the concept of you know building up your iman and building up your relationship with allah so that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you help so many amazing um, un answers from the question if, answers. If you may allow me just one minute brother yeah. sisters i don't leave any event 
any any program without encouraging all young brothers and sisters to have a program to memorize the Quran. Brothers, sisters, wallahi, I swear by Allah, and it is not good to swear by Allah in everything, but on these matters, if you do not have a plan to memorize Quran, you will regret it. Maybe now you don't regret it, but later on you will regret it. All of you are young. Within five years maximum, if you are committed, yes, you will do it. And life will be so enjoyable for you after you memorize Quran. Actually, you will be living in the paradise of the dunya because of the Quran. And that will help you to live in the paradise of the akhirah. And you, if you are deprived from the paradise of the dunya, which is the kalam of Allah Jalla wa ala, the noor. Yes, ya ayyuhal nasu, qad jaakum burhanum min rabbikum wa anzalna ilaykum noora. We reveal to you noor. If you are deprived from that paradise, actually you are deprived from the light of Allah Jalla wa ala. We are talking about temptations, desires, etc., etc. Quran is the strongest way to protect you and to elevate you to make you the most successful person in this life and in the hereafter. Jazakumullah <laughs> khaira. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakumullah khaira. Appreciate that. May Allah reward you. And thank you for giving us your time. May Allah reward you. I mean, I mean. Jazakumullah khaira. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakumullah khaira. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum